you want to become the strongest force in all of Middle Earth, you're going to need the strongest army possible. Luckily for you, this guide will allow you to recruit the strongest orcs in order to dominate the armies of the Dark Lord. I'll be detailing the best classes, tribes, traits, and bonuses you'll want to look out for so that your forces will be unbeatable in fortress sieges and in the fight pits. But I heard that 99% of you are not subscribed and in that if you press that big red button right now you'll be guaranteed to have the strongest army in the game no problem. Not to mention it also helps out the channel while keeping you up to date on future guides. But without further ado let's get into the explanation. Your followers are a direct representation of your strength and influence within Mordor. As such, you'll probably want to recruit the strongest orcs the game has to offer. But how do you obtain and train your followers while ensuring that you don't lose any valuable captain? Well, you have two options in terms of building your army in Shadow of War. First, you can train your followers and have them become the strongest warriors that they can possibly be. Or, you can recruit the new orcs who will naturally scale to your level. Both of these options are viable and have a mix of pros and cons. Older orcs require success in nemesis events and must be kept under watch to ensure their loyalty once they rise through the ranks of your army. Not to mention, you spend more time fighting alongside them to ensure they survive and gain the experience. On the other hand are the orcs constantly flooding the region through infiltration of the army screen or attacking during sieges. These orcs can be max level from the get-go or have some levels to spare in terms of being able to recruit and train them. In my experience, these orcs are more efficient as they can be trained later or shamed to rebuild their traits. It's important to know that these orcs have a higher chance of not being recruited due to their level or traits. So having your intel on their weaknesses is a must. Now, let me explain a few things you want to keep in mind for your followers to have a great advantage during both sieges and fight pits. Now let's talk about classes that you'll need for the siege. In order to successfully capture and defend the fortresses of Mordor from both Sauron and other players, you will need a variety of captains that complement each other for the fiercest assault or defending forces. This variety is the classes these orcs use and their role within your armies. A great class to have for sieging fortresses are commanders. They overwhelm the defenders or the attackers with morale boosted troops as well as spawning reinforcements at an accelerated rate. Not to mention, most commanders will have gangs that if epic can have some of their traits. Beastmasters are also a great addition to your assault forces as they will cons consistently tame defending beasts for your own use, as well as summon their own beast to aid in the assault, similarly to how commanders call reinforcements. They can also heal friendly beasts to full health. Lastly, we have slayers and berserkers, along with marksmen and hunters. These should be the bulk of your forces, as they are the ones ensuring that you eviscerate the enemy forces by fighting at close and longer ranges. They will dominate the battlefield and when aided by your commanders and beast masters will be nigh unstoppable once you recruit or kill the enemy's stronger warriors. As a bonus it's important to use assassins for defending against other players during online play since they can remove the last chance from their attacking army but they are not as effective as the other classes I just mentioned. Tanks are also great for online defense since they get to defy death and continue the fight while a player downs them, making the player fight them again. Now for the fight pits. Fight pits require mostly frontline warriors. Every other class besides Slayer, Berserker, and any ranged orc is mostly useless, since they will mostly focus on calling reinforcements, rolling over the enemy, or just attacking the grunts, or just generally wasting time. Berserkers are probably the best 
since they have a higher chance of becoming enraged. During this time, they will attack at a faster rate, dealing higher damage with less chances of being hit or interrupted. So to create the ultimate quit fighter, you'll first need them to be a berserker. Now let's talk about tribes. For sieges, I'm going to have to be completely honest. Tribes are not too relevant in terms of defending or attacking fortresses. The best ones, in my opinion, are Mystic, due to the range of the teleporting slash attack they have, the Terror Tribe, because of their chains dealing damage in a wide area in front of them, and the Slaughter and Marauder Tribes being the best against players and other orcs. They both throw a flurry of projectiles at relatively fast speeds, so I believe a completely Marauder Fortress is a viable and safe option for online defense as well as sieges. Obviously this is a bit of a niche thing, you will not need, obviously Marauder Fortresses will not be a guaranteed win or a successful defense. And regardless, it's like I said, not too relevant so you can use whatever tribe you want or if you're going for a theme, that's okay too. For fight pits, however, Marauders are by far the best orc. Simply put, their hail of crossbow bolts make them the most versatile and damage dealing tribe of them all. Great for attacking at a distance, the flurry has a pretty big range and the attack throws around 6 bolts in rapid succession, dealing extremely high amounts of damage while staggering the target, which is a massive advantage in the fight pits. This means you can have a Slayer or Berserker with a Marauder, and you'll have both close range and longer ranges covered. They'll be able to attack at close range with their melee weapons. If they're a Savage, they can throw their axes, and at longer ranges, throw the flurry of crossbow bolts. And these are very good, they're pretty much the best in the game. Now let's move on to the necessary traits for these orcs. For sieges, you'll want your orcs to have as much immunities as possible, since enraged orcs have a chance of attacking their allies. Immunity leads to poison, fire, frost, beasts, and range are must-haves for defending and attacking against the other orcs. Obviously, these are not all in one orc, as long as you have one or two of them, you'll be fine, as these will allow for your followers to take minimal damage during the siege. Of course, enrages are effective, but I would choose them very carefully, as they can often cause more damage to friendly troops than to the enemy forces. The best enrages that I like to look for are enraged by everything, which will make the orb become enraged at random intervals, enraged by injury, this will make orcs enraged after taking damage, and these two are the best enrages against enemy orcs and players. Another must have against players is Enraged by Execution. This can be combined with the immunity to executions to make a very strong captain that will cause a lot of trouble for unsuspecting enemy players. For the fight pits however, you will want to primarily use Enraged by Everything or Enraged by Energy without a doubt. These are pretty much the only consistent and viable enrages since it's one on one battles, there is also no consequence to enraged orcs attacking everybody at random. Using these two enrages you are sure to win most fight pits rather easily if combined with the right class and tribe. Obviously immunities do not count as much as long as the orc does not have any mortal weaknesses or dazed. If they're enraged, I've found that they can mostly kill their target even if they are very susceptible or heavily damaged by certain attacks. Now for the bonuses. The bonuses you'll want, I would recommend great strength and thick skin for most orcs. They're good universal bonuses that increase overall damage and health. Two exceptions to these would be commanders and tanks. For commanders, you should train one of these for elite gang if you can, as this makes the reinforcements they call in inherit some of their traits like immunities or bonuses, even enrages. As far as tanks go, 
having epic determination will allow them to fully heal during combat and will make them almost unbeatable against both orcs and players. Discuss the ideal orc you'll want for fortress, tax and defenses, and for the fight pits. The best overall orc for fortress defense would be either a commander, tank, or assassin that is immune to at least enraged attacks and executions, possesses no mortal weaknesses and cannot be dazed. That is part of the Marauder tribe while possessing the epic traits thick skinned great strength or bow. Every other strength would serve as an added bonus along with any common enrages like beasts, elements, or damage. For the fight pits however, you would want a berserker who uses a melee weapon as part of the Marauder tribe and possesses the thick or great strength bonuses. Again, if they have both of these bonuses, even better. However, they too must not have any mortal weaknesses or have a risk of becoming phased. And with that, you have the perfect orc for the fight pit. And with this, you should have the best followers to conquer Mortar. All of these orcs should be great for attacking other players' fortresses as well as defending your fortress and would-be invaders. Not to mention, you will have pretty much every champion for the fight pits. No matter which might be your opponent, your chances of success are much higher thanks to these orcs. I hope you found this guide useful as well as entertaining. I highly recommend subscribing to stay up to date with future guides and videos. I hopefully will have another beginner's guide for Spider-Man on PC soon if it's not the same day as this one. I look forward to making other guides for different games for all of you to enjoy and find useful. Have a good one and bye.